Good morning to each and every one of you. I'd like to welcome you all to Father's Care Online service today. Before we do go ahead with our service, I'd like to invite each and every one of you to join me in the Lord's Prayer today. It should be coming on your screen right about now. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen, amen, amen. We have a wonderful service in store for you today. But until then, let us get into worship and praise our Father in heaven. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Thank you so much for joining in once again. And right now we're going to look to the Father. So let's just turn our hearts right now to that place of just receiving His blessing and just praise and worship Him together. Amen.
thank you right now for this moment right now. Pray, Lord, that you just take over right now. That today won't be the same for that person that's watching right now. They won't be the same. But Lord, your Holy Spirit will just right now ignite in your people and just start to do something new. It's a new season. Every day is a new opportunity because your grace and your mercy is new every single morning. So Father, right now as we're just coming to you, Lord, as your children, we pray, Lord, that you'll just receive us, Lord. And that you'll hear our praises.
right now, just this moment. Just right now. Be calling unto Him. Whatever it's been that you've been really seeking Him for, just right now in this moment, just call unto your Father in heaven. As He hears our praises, as He hears our worship, as He hears our prayers. Oh Lord, we thank you so much, Lord. We thank you so much for this time that we've had just to praise and worship you, Father God. We build our life on your love because your love is unconditional. Your love is unchanging. Your love never changes. Our situations might change. Our seasons might change. But Father, you never change. And I thank you so much, Lord, that we can serve a God such as you, Lord. A God who just loves his people so much. A God who has given grace as a gift. Grace where it costs the giver everything, but the receiver nothing. But Lord, you didn't care because you just love your people that much. That you would die for them and do so much for them, even when we didn't deserve it, God. So that's why we build our life on your love. We build our life on your word. We keep you as our cornerstone and our foundation. Because when we put you at the center of it all, we know that it always has to be okay. That we will always have everything that we need and we'll lack nothing. And that you'll always bless us, Father God. So I pray right now that your people will just receive this blessing right now that I'm speaking over their life right now. Receive that blessing. Lord, right now I just pray that you'll be with the rest of this service, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you will have your way, Father God. I pray, Lord, that you'll be with the speaker as they come to give the word. I pray that this word will truly touch us, Lord, that we'll truly reflect on it and allow it just to transform us from the inside out, Lord, that we may be able to impact others, God, through this word that we're receiving today, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you'll just be with your people, Lord, continue to strengthen them, continue just to be with them, Father God, and continue just to let them grow. Continue just to let the character grow, Lord. And I pray, Lord, above everything, that no matter what happens, they will always remember their identity in Christ, Lord. We love you. We thank you so much. And we just call on to you, Father God. We leave this all in your hands. And in Jesus' name we say, Amen. 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 Come on, just receive that blessing right now. That's for you. As children of God, that's for you. Come on, right now as you move forward in this service, just prepare your hearts for the word. Blessings to all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for tuning in to uh, listen to us. I'm very sure that the Lord has a word for you today. Trust me, I don't know what you're going through, what's on your heart, but the Lord does. So I pray that whatever the Lord speaks to you today, it will be able to help you, give you revelation, help you transform your life and give you that life that God has called you to live and, and everything that you can be and have everything that he wants you to have. So today, my message, the uh, topic of my message is relationship, the key to an abundant life. Relationship, the key to an abundant life. And um, I'm taking my um, message from the book of uh, John, chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, which says that, uh, I am the door, anyone who enters through me will be saved. I'm, I'm uh, saying this from the Amplified Version, and will live forever. And I will go in and out freely and find pasture, spiritual security. And verse 10 says, the thief comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. And uh, my second reading is from uh, John 3.16, which we all know that for God 
so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life so before i go into the message let's pray and commit this to the lord father we just want to say thank you lord for giving this wonderful opportunity oh god to speak to your people oh god so i pray father that lord let it be your word that will minister to your people that will bring transformation oh god your word that brings entrance i pray oh god that today it will enlighten everyone that needs light oh god so they shall know the way oh god i pray oh god that your word will correct it will reprove it will give us foundation for doctrine oh god and teach us the way of righteousness which is what your word is for oh god committing everything into your hands father in jesus precious name i pray amen so today i am talking about relationship relationship the key to an abundant life John 3:16 tells us God's heart that he so loved the world. So that means whatever he did he did it out of a place of love. What he did he gave his son Jesus so that those who are perishing shall perish no more but they shall have eternal life. So in the second part is the first part is god's intention what does he want to do with us he came to impart eternal life to us now when we don't eat, when we don't understand eternal life then we will not understand abundance or prosperity or being everything that god wants us to be and have everything that god wants us to have this is where a lot of us lose it See first of all and then moving to my next part of the scripture which is John chapter 10 verse 9 Jesus says that I am the door anyone who enters through me will be saved and will live forever and will go in and out freely and find pasture which is spiritual security Now joining these two together One is talking about abundant life the other one is talking about eternal life I'm here to tell you that there is no abundant life without eternal life that's basically what my message is today So let's break it down first What is eternal life Eternal life is explained properly in John chapter 17 verse 3 The Bible says this is eternal life. What is eternal life? This is eternal life that you may know him the only true God and Jesus Christ whom he sent. That's eternal life. That you may know God the Father and God the Son. That's what God That's what salvation is all about. Salvation is all about eternal life. That God wants that those who are perishing perish no more. So in other words as we can see here there are two sides to the transaction. One is perishing and the other one is eternal life. Now God cannot choose it for us. We have to choose. See we come on this earth we talk about a lot of things that this earth is all about it is about us thriving some people are surviving but let me tell you that's not what this earth is for we have been put on this earth so we can be qualified which side of the transaction are we going to choose are going to, are we going to choose the side which is perishing or are we going to choose the eternal life That's what this life is all about. Once you choose, then you know where you are bound to go. Because the time that we spend on this earth 
is nothing. Bible even calls it a hand breath. That, that's it, it's gone. So this life here on earth is very temporary. God wants us for himself. See, God had us all for himself in the beginning. Till sin came and separated us from God. And then God sent Jesus to become that door through which we could come in and be reunited with the Father and the Son. That is why Jesus came and died on the cross of Calvary to deal with a sin problem because we know that sin blocks the way to God. So as much as the Father wants to have a relationship with us and an ongoing relationship, but he could not. Why? Because sin separated us from God. That is why we had to be justified. Salvation is threefold. Always remember that. Salvation is threefold. A lot of us are happy with the first part that we have entered, which was justification. See, justification is where you were acquitted of all your guilt, of all your wrongdoings, of all your sins. That was justification. So when you trusted Christ, the Bible says that for by grace you have been saved through faith. So that was God's gift to you. You didn't have to do anything for that. And you got saved. Once you got saved, why did you get saved? So that we can go around and tell we are God's people, we are Christians, we are good people. Look, we are doing so much holy work. No, 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 no. You got saved because Papa wanted to love you. He wanted to regather you to himself. Why? For God so loved the world. It is out of his love that he saved you. So we've done the first part where Christ came. He became an atonement for our sin. Sin problem done with. Absolutely gone. Covered under the blood of Jesus, we are now heaven bound. The problem is that this is where a lot of people stop. They think that's it. I've got two things now. I have got Jesus on my side and I've got, I know a lot of good scriptures in the Bible. So if I, go in, if I get into any trouble, I'm going to speak on these scriptures and God will turn up for me uh, and he will help me because it's his job to help me. And number two is when I die, at least I can die with that comfort that I'm going to go to heaven. I tell you, a lot of people think like that. And you know what? If you're thinking like that, that is not absolutely incorrect. But that is not absolutely correct either. That's only part of the equation. God calls us to himself. Why? Because he wants to love us. He wants to show his glory, his majesty, his goodness, his awesomeness. He, he wants to show to the world who he is through us. He's, it's like a father who wants to break through his children. Look at my son. Did you see his soccer skills? He's awesome, isn't he? Wow. When would you see a father who will say, did you see my son? He plays such bad soccer, doesn't he? Ridiculous. No. Parents are always proud of their children. They, they want to invest the best in them. That is why, say for example, even for me right now, my, my Risha, I take her for swimming. Nikhil, I used to take him for soccer. Because I wanted to see them 
really come up in their gifts and be the best version of themselves. Everything that God has put into them for that to come out. So even today, I keep encouraging them. I keep encouraging them. Because I want to see the best version of my children. If Imagine if you and I can think like that about our children. What does God think about us? You know what? In fact, God wants to boast about us. He wants to say, did you see Neil? Did you see his house? Did you see his car? Did you see his wife? Did you see his relationship? Did you see his children? Wow. But when I say that, I'm not just talking about the material side of things. God wants us to have material. Provided material doesn't have us. That's the only problem. And a lot of times these scriptures are twisted and people don't understand it. What did Jesus say here? This is the heart of Jesus. He says that the thief comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have and enjoy life. Have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. What kind of life would that be? See, according to Vine's Expository Dictionary, this life means Zoe life. Not the life that you and I live as a natural man. But this is the life that God imparts, which before receiving Christ, we did not even know that this life exists because it is the God kind of life. A life that flows with so much freedom and abundance and there is no limits to it because God is not limited. God is infinite. You and I try to comprehend Him with our limited mindset. And maybe that's where the problem happens. Because we think God is all that we think He is. That is why Isaiah 55, chapter 8, verse 9, the Bible says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways. As far as the heaven is from the, from the earth, so are, my, so are my thoughts and my ways from you. So don't try to, try to comprehend me. Don't try to understand me with your very limited mind. Your mind can only be stretched so far. You cannot understand me from that mind. And then what we do is, we start putting God in our mold. And everything in the Bible that doesn't make sense because it's too good to be true, we start rejecting it. We say, nah, God cannot mean that. That's too good to be true. You know what the gospel means? It means good news. In fact, if you further emphasize it, it means too good to be true. That's what the gospel is. Because if it was not too good to be true, you and I could have done it. God did not need Jesus to accomplish that for us. It is only God who can give us something that is too good to be true. And God did not, Jesus did not die for us so that we sit down and wait here that when am I going to die so that I can go to heaven and enjoy the things of heaven. At the end of the day, when we go to heaven, what do you think will happen there? We will be with the Father and with the Son. If we don't like the Father and the Son here on this earth, we don't want to commune and fellowship with Him, why would we like Him there? Eternal life starts right this second, the second you became a born again believer. He calls you to himself. And he says, come to me and I will show you great and mighty things that you do not know. The Bible says that those who know their God, they shall be strong and they shall carry out great exploits. Why? Because there are some things they know. Some things they know. See, in the West, when we use the word know, it is all about knowledge. That's what we associate with. It is like the intellect. But in the East, when the word know is used, knowing God, it is knowing on a deeper level. 
See, in Genesis chapter 4, verse 1, the Bible says, And Adam knew Eve, and they had Cain. No, no, no. Adam did not say, okay, Eve, you're looking good today and you've got black eyes and you've got uh, big hair and uh, uh, yeah, you're about five feet seven and, and then Cain came into, into this world. No, 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 no. That is the intellectual knowing, which is like you're describing something. But Adam knew Eve. That means there was an intimacy that took place. An intimacy which then produced a child. In the same way, God calls us to Him so that an intimacy can happen. So that we can produce some things. Ask yourself why. Maybe, maybe today you're not seeing much being produced in your life. Ask yourself why. Because maybe I've missed the first part. The first part was not to run with scriptures and start quoting all the promises of God and, 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 and watching when is it going to appear. No, at least that's not biblical. That is all part of the deal. But the first part is to run to Him. Spend time with Him. Relationship. Relationship is the key to everything. If you cannot have a relationship with God, how can you know His heart? And even if He tells you to do something, why would you trust Him? Why would you trust him? You trust people who you know. You don't know him. And God says without faith it is impossible to please him or even do anything in his kingdom. Everything is done by faith. And you don't even know that God. Do you wonder now why when God calls people to a higher place, not too many go? Because they think, ah, come on, you're going to drown me there. It's too deep. I don't have a plan B. See, Jesus says here that I came to give you life that you may enjoy it and that it may overflow out of you. Ask yourself, are you living that overflowing life today? Are you living that overflowing life today where it is, it is going out of you? There's so much happening in your life, wonderful, uh, uh, full of prosperity. Now, prosperity is a very wholesome word. You're enjoying good health. You're enjoying good relationships. You, you, you're enjoying a, a very wealthy position. You, you, you're not lacking anything. You're not lacking anything. See the, see the psalmist says in 23, uh, chapter 23, he says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. What does he do? He makes me to lie down in the green pastures. Does, does the psalmist say, that you know what, I'm putting so much pressure on the Lord to give me some pasture. No. What does he say? He says, he makes me to lie down on the green pastures. That means it's God's will, it is desire to see you prosper, to see you being abundant. But that will only happen once you have a personal relationship with him so that you can know what he's saying because he is going to give you some instructions what to do. If you don't, see Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. So you first have to recognize the voice of the master. See like a little child, if the mother or the father comes in the house and takes the name, you see how the child runs to the parent because they know the voice. But if an outsider comes, the child doesn't do that. In the same way, why? You know why that happens? Because the child spends so much time with the parents. That they get used to that voice. God doesn't want us. Because John chapter 10 verse 10, in the first part he says, there is a thief. There is a thief. No surprises. He tells you on the outset, there is a thief who's come to do what? To steal, to kill, to destroy. Is any of that thing happening in your life today? Ask yourself, who is having a better say in my life? Is it the thief or is it Jesus? Because this is what Jesus said he will do for me. 
are these things happening? Or are these things happening? I wonder who invites those things inside, isn't it? Because nothing happens without our will and without our choice. God's heart is always to bless His children. See, when we are obedient to Him, when we love Him and we listen to Him, He loves to give us instructions. He in fact wants us to be so prosperous, so much. The Bible says um, about uh, King Solomon, the uh, son of King David, right? It says here in uh, uh, 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 25, <clears throat> that King David pleased the Lord. And when he had a son, Solomon, the Bible says that King David named him David, uh, Solomon. But God named him Jedediah. You know what Jedediah means? The beloved of the Lord. The Bible says the Lord loved him. Jedediah means the beloved of the Lord. And go and find out about King Solomon. How poor he was. How much in need he was. How broke he was. The Bible says he was the richest man ever to live or ever that, that, will ever, that will ever come into this world. What is God hiding from you? Nothing. In uh, Genesis chapter 13 verse 2, you know what the Holy Spirit says? He says, Abraham was rich in livestock, in gold and in silver. Why does Holy Spirit have to interject and say that? Because he wants to tell his people that whom the lo Lord loves, the Lord showers his gifts upon that person. God loves us. See, Jesus clears the whole matter. He says that money, wealth, prosperity, abundance is never a problem. But here, I'm, let, let me specifically talk about money. Hmm? Money. A thing which is like a taboo. The minute you talk money, people, oh my God, he's talking about money. I hope he doesn't ask for any. You know what Jesus says in uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 21? It's a wonderful conversation that Jesus is having there. And he sets the record straight. He says, you know what? Money is not the problem. The problem is with your heart. Bible never said that money is the root of all evil. The Bible says the love of money is root of all evil. Jesus says where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. Just make sure you choose your treasure correctly. Run after me and everything that is in me will be yours. The Old Testament says that the Lord is my portion. That's wisdom, isn't it? Because when the Lord comes, He brings everything with Him. Whole of the salvation package. So let me tell you today, when we go to the Lord, wealth, good health, everything comes itself. Nothing lacking. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. That word want is also the word lack. I shall not lack. Who is your shepherd? The Lord. Jesus says in uh, uh, John 10, chapter 11, that, the, that I am the good shepherd who lays his life for the sheep. What has he kept away from you? Nothing. Nothing. But the only place where we make a mistake is we are not going into our relationship with the Lord. We are not spending time in the Word and saying that Lord, and, and you know what God has given us the Holy Spirit? He said, you are not doing this life alone because I know it's a spiritual life and you are so used to being a natural man who only sees things through your carnality, which is through your five senses, right? That is why He says that you shall walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh because the flesh will have its own cries but you have to tune yourself every day to walk in the Spirit so that my Holy Spirit can lead you and guide you and take you onto that path that I want you to go on so you can embark on that abundant life that I want to impart onto you. 
That's what God is asking us to do. That is why on a practical level, we need to spend time with the Lord. If you don't know somebody, how can you trust them? Everything is built on a relationship. Marriages are on the brink today. Divorces, divorce lawyers are becoming rich. Who is giving them that opportunity? It's you and I. Why? Because we are too busy to work on the main foundation, which is relationship. Get your relationships right. And I'm telling you, fathers, mothers, children, you will get your abundant life back. Parents are crying, the children are not listening to me. I'm telling you, get your dinner table back. Sit down with your children. Don't just be under one roof. Spend time with each other. How will I know what my child, child did today if I don't ask them? Maybe he's come home, he's really stressed. He's worried somebody has said something to him. How do I know it as a father? And how can I help him? I need to have a conversation. I need to communicate. I need to build my own relationship. I think a relationship is very sorry when somebody says, that is my wife, that is my child, but I barely even know them. Some stranger comes and tells me, hey, do you know, this is what Nikhil feels. This is what Ara feels. This is what Risha feels. But I don't know. And I'm the father. Who do I blame? I never took time to build that relationship. Women get moved into other relationships. Men get moved into other relationships. That may never have happened in the first place had there been some, some attention given to that relationship. Relationships are very important. In the workplace, people are working for 10 months, 12 months, 15 months, and they leave their job. You know why? Because when they look back, it doesn't look like when I leave this place, anybody's going to miss me. That's the power of relationships. On a Sunday, you cannot find people to work for you. But I'm telling you, you get that employee one day and sit down and have coffee with them. I tell you, you can give him double pay. He might not come because he's spending time with his family. But you know why he will come? Because he's got a relationship with you and he cannot turn you down. When you call him and you say, I don't have enough crews to fill in today. Can you please come in? He'll say, not a problem. I'll be there in half an hour's time. What money can't do, relationships will. So I'm here to tell you that relationships are so important. I, I, I don't know who I'm ministering to. I, I, I don't know who is, who is getting what out of this. But I just felt this thing about this very strongly about relationships. Relationships are falling apart today. Marriages are breaking. Children are the collateral damage of that. And then, you know what? They go and do the same thing. They will go and build a life exactly like that. Imitate the parents. I'm very sorry for those where things happen outside of, any, outside of anyone's fault. No, it was nobody's fault. It was just something natural that happened. I'm not even talking to those people. I'm not even talking to those people. I'm just talking about, talking of those who are just too busy to spend time in that relationships. Stop running after things. Run after God and things will run after you. You know what the Bible says? Proverbs 10, chapter, chapter 10, verse 22 says, that is the blessing of the Lord that maketh one rich and he has no sorrow with it. I'm telling you today, in, in, in context of money, the prosperity that is being chased is always going to leave a collateral damage. I'm going to say that again. That's a very important statement I made there. Prosperity that is chased is always going to leave collateral damage. Yes, it's all good. I've got 10 properties. I've got investment properties. I paid off my house. Wonderful. At what cost? Your husband and wife are still talking to each other? What about your health? Because I'm sure to do that, maybe you had to do two, three jobs. What about your children? 
because you were working so much out there, you were not there at home to correct them, to discipline them, to show them the path of life, the way that they should live. That was the cost. That was the cost. That is why God says that the blessing of the Lord makes one rich. And you know what? He's not going to add that toiling to it so that you are going to enjoy that abundance, that overflow, that blessing. And that's how God wants to bless us. But as I said, it comes from that point of eternal life. To know God the Father and to know His Son, Jesus Christ. How do we do that? We do that by going into His Word. By going into His Word and slowly but surely reading it, asking the Holy Spirit to, to teach us because the Bible says He's the one who inspired every word in the Bible. He's the author. He's going to tell you. He's going to tell you. Everywhere when you see, when you read a scripture like that, what Jesus says, He says, I've come to give you abundant life. I've come to make sure that you don't lack anything. I will lead you beside the still waters. I will restore your soul. I will lead you in the path of righteousness. Why? For my name's sake. Because you are known by my name. Imagine if I send my children to school and they've got holes in their pocket and my children are stinking, they are dirty. What reflection does it give on the father? People will say that is Neil's son. It grieves God's heart when people live a broken, poor, deprived life. Does not bring him any glory. He has brought you so that he can show himself strong, glorious, powerful through you. But for that, he needs you first. He needs your heart. He needs you to come to Him and spend time with Him. Don't be a Martha who was worried about all the things that was happening around her. Be a Mary. Sit at the feet of the Master and listen to the words of life. Listen to the instruction for every situation. And then God will say, go. God will say, go. Many a times He doesn't say, go. We just want to go. We leave anyway. We say, Lord, you're taking too much time. I don't know when you're going to speak. I'm going to go and do it anyway. Peter toiled all night. He toiled all night. He was a seasoned fisherman who knew exactly how to fish. But nonetheless, at the word of Jesus, he said, I'm going to cast the net there. And the Bible says he collected net breaking fish. At the word of the master, we need to sit at His feet and we need to listen to what He's saying. We are running ahead of Him. What did Jesus say to His disciples? Follow me. Follow me. That was His instruction. He didn't say go and do what you want to do. He said, follow me. All these things will come. All these, the mind will be renewed. You will understand His voice, everything. But it all starts from that place of relationship. So I'm here to encourage you, brothers and sisters. I hope this message has encouraged someone today that it all comes from a place of relationship. And I also gave you some examples of human relationships, why they are falling apart today. Because there is no relationship. People living together doesn't mean there's a relationship. Work on that, build it. The same thing, just be known by the name of Jesus, just be known as a Christian, does not really make us a Christian. It does not impart eternal life to us. Eternal life means knowing Him intimately, knowing Him for ourselves, knowing Him to the point that whatever He tells us to do, we've got no problems because we trust Him so much which comes from the point of knowledge. God wants to shower so much blessings on us, me, you, everybody. But it has a starting point. So I just pray that this word you will listen to, you will make some notes, you will go and meditate upon it, you will pray over it, and it will sink into you. 
and lead you towards that abundant life that Jesus said that he has come to give you. Once again, thank you so much for tuning in today and listening. God bless you. much for tuning in. We hope that the word and the worship blessed your heart. Now before we let you go, we'll say the declaration together. 2024 is my year of grace grace. I will accomplish God's plan and purposes for my life and this year not by might, not by power, but by His Spirit. I speak grace grace, the undeserved, unmerited and unearned favour of God to every mountain and declare that you are becoming a plain before me. He who began a good work in me and through me will complete it until the day of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope you all have a blessed week ahead and please don't forget to like, share and subscribe on all our socials. Until then, stay blessed and stay safe.